Welcome to the creek. We have tadpoles, we have water bugs. There are lots of things floating on top of the water, floating in the water. And if you look, there's a lot of things growing because of the water. Even though this creek may not be here all year when it dries up, we still have a lot of plants that rely on the water. Not all the water stays on top all year long. When it dries up, there's groundwater underneath, and all these plants and trees, they can still get their water all year round. Whether they're absorbing it from the atmosphere around them, like in the morning when it feels like it's kind of wet outside on everything, or they're absorbing it from the water that goes down into the ground and stays there all year and doesn't evaporate. It gets soaked up by those deep tree roots. So have a look at this watershed. What do you notice? Have a look at this ecosystem. Can you tell what's surviving in the water? What's surviving on top of the water? Is water alive? Nah, water's not alive. But everything alive needs water. What else is important here that's not alive? What about the sunlight? What about the ground? What about all the mud that the tadpoles are wiggling around in at the bottom of the creek? Even though those aspects of the ecosystem aren't alive, they're still important for the survival of all kinds of organisms. Let's think about the food web. Let's think about how energy makes its way all the way from the sun all the way up to the tadpoles. In the water, you have algae. Algae is like a plant that is very, very small, but when there's enough of it, all together it looks like perhaps the green slime you've noticed on the bottom of a lake or in a pool. Algae gets its energy from the sun. It absorbs all that energy in the daytime. And as it grows, it grows and makes sugars. And then we have some tadpoles and some fish and some insects that swim around and eat the algae. And then maybe some birds eat those. And they're all connected together. All these little food chains from one organism to another all interconnect in a great food web. Hi, welcome to the creek. What's your name? Uh, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. What do you have there? We got two tadpoles. One big one and one small one. Um, the big one has little hind behind feet. What do you know about tadpoles? What's going to happen to them? As uh, soon hit the, some of them, they're going to they're going to have front feet, and then after that, the tadpoles are going to become frogs and lose their tail. Can you show us where they came from? Okay, so they came from over here. I got it. Look, look, look. That's a hawk flying after another bird. This bottle contains a complete ecosystem. Do you know what that means? If you have a complete ecosystem, it means you don't have to add anything as long as you don't take anything out. It has everything it needs so that way the organisms can survive. It has all of its own um, natural resources. It has a decomposer. Technically, the snail counts as a decomposer. It helps break down um, if there were dead plants in here, if the plants died off, it would eat that. Um, any sort of junk at the bottom of fish tanks. Did you just float to the bottom so you could get some junk? Already down there. Um, we've got a decomposer, so it cleans up after itself. The water will stay pretty pure. Um, everything in here interacts. They, um, the snail has to interact with the water because that's where it gets all of its nutrients. It gets oxygen through the water. It gets... So anyways, 
When we look at all the parts of our ecosystem, we can really see how they all interact and in fact depend on each other. It's like a delicate balancing act. If you remove something or add something, um, it's going to mix things up and it may not be for the better. So let's break it down. Let's look at a model um, of our ecosystem. I want you to go ahead and get your note paper because yours isn't exactly like mine. All right, so first thing for our model, I'm going to start by drawing our vessel. So we've got our water bottle, we've got our cap, we've got our water level. Now specifically in mine, I have I have two sprigs of plant. You might have one long one, you might have two or three little ones. Make sure to draw and record your personal observations. Alright, so I have sprig one and another one. And right now, my snail is at the bottom. So I'm going to draw it at the bottom. Now I want to look at something here. Is my drawing an accurate representation? Is my drawing showing what really is happening in my bottle? I'm going to tell you one thing I notice, and I'm going to go back and fix it. And you might think about changing this for your observations too. When I look at my whole water bottle, I don't have a snail that takes up almost the entire bottom of it. Mine is actually kind of tiny. I'm going to adjust my drawing so that way it more accurately represents what I see. It's, it's recording your scientific observations more accurately. All right, so, I'm going to use a reference. I'm going to look at, how about the cap of the bottle? How big is this snail compared to the cap of the bottle? About maybe half the size of it. So I want about half the size of it. That's more accurate. So, So, when we look at our model, it's almost complete. Right now, it's just, I'm going to say it's a pretty drawing, but if we really want to make this accurate and something that we can use to communicate science and to use to study from, we have to label it. We have to know what we're looking at. So let's start with our biotic factors, our living things. We have plant number one. And we have plant number two. We have snail. Is that everything in our bottle? Well, we didn't even label the bottle itself, so that surely can't be everything in the bottle. These are just what's alive. So let's look at our abiotic factors. What else? are our organisms relying on. They're relying on the water. There's air in the top of the bottle. And there's the bottle itself. And the cap. Now we have labeled our model of our ecosystem. Let's have a look at some of these relationships between them. So let's see here. Our snail probably could have a few partners. You could probably support a few more snails in here. If they did, maybe they could find mates, maybe they could reproduce. And at that point, we would need to add more plants. So I don't think we're going to add anything else in here. Could we make any other adjustments to our ecosystem? Could we... Could we add something else growing, maybe something like a plant. 
When you think about real ponds and lakes and rivers, those are called watersheds. And a watershed is just a place where there's a lot of organisms um, that are supported by a body of water. So how can we make this more like a true watershed? If we could add perhaps, if this is the bottom of a pond, what if we had like the top of a pond and there's trees and there's birds? Well, there is a way for us to in fact add on a planter on top and you're going to see how all of these interactions are still able to support each other. There will be this food web of materials and resources that flow in between. The plants will grow and filter the water, the snails will grow and eat the plants and they'll produce waste and that waste will be fertilizer for the plants as well as the plant on top. You'll be able to see this flow of energy that goes all through it. You could even add a fish in here and have an even more complete food web. You'd have a lot nibbling on those plants. A fish would actually probably eat their snail eggs up here too. Have to wait and see. Well, let's see what kind of ecosystem you can put together. All right, let's make sure you have all of your supplies. You need your little bottle of ecosystem. You need something to empty it into while we do some construction on the bottle. I have a pair of scissors. I have two coffee filters, some tape, and I'm only gonna need a couple of beans. I don't need all of these. So we're gonna recreate a watershed ecosystem. First thing we're going to do is very gently we're going to pour out our water because we have to cut up our bottle. Your plants and snail may or may not come out. My snail is deciding to stay on the bottom and you know what? You're fine, pal. I don't wanna cause you any extra stress, so I'm going to make my cutting quick on this, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna look at this first um, pressed ring right here on the water bottle and I'm going to cut the bottle right there. Be careful not to ruin the top because this is going to be a planter for our seeds. Hang on for the red. Try and make one little hole and now I can get in here and cut straight around the top. All right, not so bad. This top, I'm going to, I'm going to flip it and it's going to set right inside here and see how it sets there. I'm going to take a marker. I should have set this out. I'm gonna take a marker and I'm gonna look at where the tip of that is because I need to make sure my water line is just above it. This is going to have to touch the level of water and you're going to have some help. You're going to have some coffee filter to act as a wick and a wick is something that soaks up. So it's going to soak up water to water your planter. You won't even have to water it. You'll have to make sure that the water doesn't completely evaporate, but for the most part, you're not going to have to water it every day. All right. So that gets turned upside down. I'm going to set that aside for a moment and start reassembling. I'm going to put my plant back in and I'm going to make a mess. I'm going to, one second. Do I have a cup? Well, the short cup doesn't really fit. No, the funnel. The top. You're a genius. I have a funnel. So I can pour it. Well, no, because it's the same width. You're not a ge Okay, you are. You're a genius to me. I love you. Okay. I'm going to gently, hold on, pour this in. Try not make a mess. One second. Yeah. Ah! Okay, okay, okay. All right, I need to check my water level. 
I need to make it. <coughs> I need to make it above this blue line. Okay, hold on. Might be too much, let's see. Is it too high above the blue line? Maybe a little too high. I really want it to be just at, just at the level. There you go. I want this to really be just at water level. There we go, just touching it. Next, I've got all this extra water here, see? I had a nice full bottle. There's still plenty of water in here for the plant and the snail to survive. You can always just add a little more if you need to. All right, so I'm not gonna tape it down yet. Next, I need something to act as a wick. It needs to soak up the water from here into the planter. So see how I folded it so I can just press it in, maybe about that far. And now I'm gonna open it up like a flower inside. That way it'll stay in place and it won't slip out. Okay, see, I opened it like a flower. It's gonna hold right there. I'm gonna take this now and put it in here. And this is really going to be my planter. This is what's gonna hold the seeds. Okay, I'm gonna stuff it down. And it's going to give it, since we don't have soil, it's going to give something to cradle the seeds or our beans. And um, I think we're ready. That's really it. So let's look at the parts. We have our planter, something to soak up the water, and the base with our plant in it. You can make a different ecosystem if you wanna make it out of something other than a bottle. If you have all these same parts, and think about it, if you had to make a diagram, would everything still get the resources that it needs? You could make, you could make one out of a big mason jar, or a big plastic tub that's left over. You could make it out of your favorite glass that you have just up in the cabinet. As long as you have the water vessel you have something to hold your seed or your plant. You have something to soak up the water. And you have access to sunlight so our plants can still grow. You have essentially a complete ecosystem. So let's go ahead and put our bean in here. I can put a couple right down in there. All right, they're in the water. I'm gonna pour a little water on top just to kind of get the absorbing action started. Have you ever noticed that if you use a towel to dry off that's really, really dry, it's kind of streaky and it doesn't dry as well. But if you get a towel that's just a little damp, it seems to soak up the water off of you so fast. Well, water is attracted to itself. So if I put a little bit of water it'll attract the water up to it. And it'll kind of kickstart the process. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, I'm going to wipe off the sides and I'm gonna add a little tape. If I put this in a window, I have cats. They could knock it over. If you don't have cats, um, this might just be fine to sit in a window, but I want to put a little tape just to make it more safe. Just a little bit. So when I see you on Flipgrid, not everybody will have something like this. Yours might look a little different. You might make one out of a different container. But I can't wait to see your watershed ecosystems and Maybe if we check in next summer, maybe we'll have some plants growing. I had a great time learning how to examine ecosystems with you and how to take care of them at home. And I hope you take some of this and think about how your actions affect the environment around you. All right. Thanks, guys.